the big picture of economics. Our essential question, what has been the role of money over time? We're going to read how many of our everyday choices are determined by economics. Money matters. What is economics? It's the study of how people decide what to make and sell. It's also the study of why people buy some things and not others and of how items reach the marketplace, the place where people shop. The marketplace might be a corner grocery store, a large shopping mall, or a site on the internet. Now, put your hand in your pocket and take out a nickel, a quarter, or a dollar bill. It may be difficult to imagine, but there was a time before there was money. There was a time before people studied economics. Thousands of years ago, there was no money. People were self-sufficient, so they gathered and hunted for whatever food they needed, made their own tools, and built their own homes. Some people were good hunters, and others were better at making baskets and clubs so people traded. A hunter might trade an animal skin for some berries. But how many berries is an animal skin worth and what would the hunter do with all those berries? People needed money, something that everyone would be willing to take in a trade and that could also be used to get the things they needed. People found that precious metals such as gold and silver made good money. Pieces of gold and silver came in all sizes and you could weigh a piece to know how much it was worth. Then coins were made. Coins didn't have to be weighed because people knew each coin's weight and how much it was worth. A pocket full of coins is heavy. So paper money was invented. The first paper money was a printed promise that could be exchanged for gold or silver coins. Today, few countries make gold and silver coins, but paper money has value because you can use it to buy gold or silver. You can use it to buy bread, shoes, and other things too. So take a moment and think, why do people exchange money instead of berries and anim or animal skin? You can learn about economics at a restaurant. In a restaurant, you'll see a menu with lots of things for sale. Each item has a price, which helps you decide what to buy. You may not be sure whether you want a hamburger or a tuna sandwich. If you're really not sure, you might buy the one that costs less. Of course, the greater the difference in the prices, the greater the chance you'll buy what's cheaper. If a hamburger costs a dollar and a tuna sandwich costs ten dollars, it's likely you'll buy the hamburger. Price might even convince people to buy something they didn't really want. Suppose you are in a restaurant and you are hungry for a tuna sandwich. You see the prices on the menu and realize that if you buy a hamburger instead of a tuna sandwich, you'll, sit, you'll have money left to buy a salad and pudding. Price might convince you to buy hamburger instead of a tuna sandwich. How do the prices of the things we want affect the decisions we make? Now, suppose you are walking past a restaurant. You aren't really hungry, but you see a sign in the window that says a hamburger costs just $1. At that price, you might decide to buy one. Of course, a high price would have the opposite effect. It might convince you not to buy something you really want. Suppose you are in a restaurant and you're really hungry for a tuna sandwich. You see that a tuna sandwich costs $10. 
And do you really want a tuna sandwich and not a hamburger? At $10 for a tuna sandwich, you might decide to leave the restaurant and go to a grocery store where you can buy a can of tuna fish and some bread and make your own sandwich. Price might help someone decide what to make and sell. Suppose you and your friends are walking through town and are suddenly thirsty. You search and find there's a scarcity of places in your neighborhood to buy a drink. Scarcity leads to opportunity and you decide to start your own business. To become an entrepreneur, you will set up a table in front of your house and sell drinks. Now you must decide what to sell, hot tea or ice cold lemonade. It's a hot summer day and lots of people would be willing to pay a dollar for a small cup of cold lemonade. Few people would be willing to pay even a dime for a cup of hot tea. You'll probably decide it's to your benefit to make and sell lemonade. It's to your benefit to make what people are anxious to buy. Before you set up your business, you'll have to invest in lemons, sugar, and paper cups. You'll have to spend money even before your very first transaction, your very first sale. You'll spend time making the drinks, and that time is a cost, too. It's your opportunity cost. During the time you're making lemonade, you've lost the opportunity to do something else. The lemonade you make is your merchandise. It's your supply and the people who come to buy it are in demand. The laws of supply and demand. According to one old proverb, the worth of a thing is what it will bring. The value of your merchandise is determined by how much you can get for it on the open market. And that is determined by the laws of supply and demand. If you expect lots of thirsty people to pass your lemonade stand, you might make lots of lemonade. And if you did, you'd have lots of supply. If few people come by, you would have very little demand. What would you do? You might be anxious to sell the drinks and decide to lower the price. Lowering the price will probably increase the demand. Few people might be willing to pay $2 for a cup of lemonade. More people might buy some for just a dollar a cup. And lots of people might buy lemonade at just 50 cents a cup. The lower the price, the greater the demand will be. And if the price of your lemonade is low enough, someone who planned to buy only one cup might buy a second and even a third, someone who isn't even thirsty might drink, might buy a drink. The lower the price of your merchandise, the greater the demand. If you only bought a few lemons and made just a small pitcher of lemonade, you would be, you would have very little supply. What if there's lots of demand, lots of people who are thirsty and want to buy a drink? Perhaps at $1 a cup, you could quickly sell all the drinks. But you might want to raise the price. At $2 a cup, your supply won't sell as quickly, but you'll make much more money on each cup you sell. In a country with a free market, such as the United States, people can charge whatever they want for the things they sell. In a free market, as supply goes up, prices go down. And as supply goes down, prices go up. In a free market, as demand goes up, prices go up. And as demand goes down, prices go down. Those are the laws of supply and demand. What's the best price for lemonade? The best price is low enough for people to want to buy some and high enough for you and perhaps others to want to make and sell it. The higher the price of your merchandise, the lower the demand. The global marketplace. In the United States, people in one state buy products made in other states, even in other countries. And we sell things to people in other states and countries. The world we live in 
is truly a global marketplace. The pen you use to write your homework may have been made in China, and the sneakers you wear to school every day may have been made in Japan. The peach you ate for lunch may have been grown in Brazil. Foreign trade is the exchange of goods and services between people here and in other countries. Of course, when we sell our products to people in other countries, we might not be paid in dollars. In the United States, we use dollars and cents to buy things. But people in other countries use different currency, different money. In Mexico, people use pesos and centavos. In Europe, they use euros. In Russia, they use rubles and kopecks. In China, yuan. In Brazil, reals and centavos. In Japan, yen. And in India, rupees. Because we live in a global marketplace, the things we eat, wear, and use may come from different places. It is said that money is power. This tells us a lot about our global marketplace. Around the world, the richest countries are also the most powerful. But how did they get this way? The answer is economics. Understanding how our global market Place works explains why so many people study economics. Economics helps us understand how people live, how they sell, buy, and trade things, how they decide what to grow on their land and what to produce in their factories. Many of the things we, our families, and our friends do, from buying a hamburger to taking a vacation to trading video games, are determined by economics. Many of the choices you make today and in the future, even what to buy in a restaurant, will be determined by economics. So, the overall value of a country's total goods and services is its GDP, or gross domestic product. It is usually calculated annually. So countries with the highest gross domestic product from 2010 was the USA, then China, Japan, India, and Germany. And off to the left, we can see the trillions of dollars. And that is the end. So I hope you'll think about what has been the role of money over time and how our everyday choices are determined by economics.